Hello, this is Doug Brunke of the Global Chamber, and today we're very honored to have Mike Patterson, who is an Arizona-based attorney. He works for Polsonelli. Uh, he's a shareholder there. Polsonelli has 750 attorneys uh, t working in 21 countries and very international. 21 cities. 21 cities. In the U.S. Okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. So we're part of an international network. And probably has a lawyer everywhere. And probably ending up in working in probably over 100 countries, I would guess, at the end of the day. That's probably that right. So thanks, thanks for that, because you, you certainly are very international, Mike. Uh, I've heard people refer you uh, as Miguel, and that's because Mike has lived and worked in Latin America for more than 10 years, and that's included Costa Rica, Lyon, Mexico City. Uh, he reads, writes, speaks, sings, negotiates in Spanish. His international experience goes far beyond Latin America. In the last two years, he's assisted clients with needs in Asia, Eastern, Western Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and all over Latin America and the Caribbean. Mike, it's a real great honor to have you here. Thank you. And we love Canada, too. <laughs> we work with Can Canadians. That's very good. Well, you, uh, you are uh, one of the most international people that I know, and lo and behold, you happen to have real brilliance in, in the area of law, Thanks, and Doug. in particular, uh, certain areas. Um, you've got special expertise in securities and international issues. Uh, you've helped countless companies go international and expand their, their business. Today, we're going to be talking about kind of that getting ready stage for companies. Uh, uh, over that last decade of, especially when you were uh, living in Mexico, you've got such deep international experience from that. What over that period of time and since then um, have been key success factors for companies that you've worked with uh, where they've actually used certain things, certain techniques and been successful? What have you noticed over the years? Well, above all, um, folks, thanks, Doug. Above all, uh, people who are ready to take the next step and do something, like when you click off of this video, uh, take the next step, actually do something. Uh, but I would say that uh, it, the days are over to be thinking about should I or shouldn't I be doing international. Um, if you're not, you're going to wake up tomorrow and uh, some kid in Shanghai or, or Bogota has created an app that now controls your business and you work for him or her. You know, so uh, we all know how that works. Um, I think the first, probably one of the first keys is they need to stay focused on the opportunity. Does my product or service uh, really make sense going internationally? It, it, I'm sure it does. Uh, but really, have you focused on that opportunity and need to keep that uh, the right reasons for going international and for doing it uh, in focus. Uh, obviously, making a profit, yes. Uh, having a higher profit margin uh, in, an, in another jurisdiction where my product or service is scarce uh, or there are less of my competitors who have taken the plunge and uh, jumped to go into that jurisdiction so I can make a better profit margin. Uh, diversifying. In the last downturn, we found that companies that were doing international were less exposed because they, you know, while, while the American market was dropping for their products and services, some people were enjoying uh, great success overseas and diversifying. Um, those are some of the right reasons. And building a long-term relationship that, uh, uh, well, even a supply relationship with someone who is also my distributor, but maybe they're supplying something to me like a maquiladora in Latin America uh, or people that can provide some piece of technology. Uh, I have a cross-border software client that uh, stays competitive in the U.S. because he has 240 software engineers south of the border that he pays less for, uh, but excellent uh, uh, te uh, technological expertise. But that makes him, part of his strategy, more competitive in the U.S. Um, the wrong reasons for going international are so that we can, uh, you know, brag around the cocktail circuit that we're, we're in we're in Colombia, or look at us, we're international, isn't that interesting? Or to give uh, somebody in the executive team a reason to do two or three trips with their spouse to uh, you know, some exotic location, or it's fun to dabble, isn't it? Or, or I know so-and-so, and he or she is in 
uh, Asia or Latin America or Europe, isn't that cool? Now, those are the wrong reasons to be uh, influenced by, and yet you would be surprised how many uh, people kind of chuck, they've done you know, 900 business deals in the U.S., but they met a guy, you know, uh, and uh, it amazes me. It really has through the years that people will be influenced by they have this relationship with someone wow. that they met over a margarita. But we hope that uh, companies are on a different level than that. Uh, but we uh, th- so those are the right reasons. Uh, you do need uh, partners you can trust. And uh, in Latin America, it is in particular, uh, relationships are very important. But that doesn't mean you don't need to read corruption there. But sometimes you can borrow other people's relationship structure. For example, using a good local accounting firm or a local law firm or a local uh, placement group, some, someone who's a consultant locally, they are well connected. They know the right person for you to meet. They know the right government officials for you to be in contact with. Um, you can borrow their network of relationships by having a relationship with someone who knows. I think I've heard you talk about this before. Um, do you feel like that uh, that type of activity is um, more important in Mexico and Latin America, meaning you're really getting to know people at a deeper level? Um, I think, I, would you say that that's really important almost every country that you work with? And how would you, how would you compare Mexico and Latin America to, to that factor in international business? Yes. Uh, we, we talk about even in the U.S., it's who you know. Uh, that's very important. Relationships are important. But I think uh, relationships of trust are even more important. Uh, in Latin America, it's a way of doing business. Um, but um, the uh, just a, a comment, someone will often, I am actually don't get the call as an attorney to represent someone in a cross-border matter with Mexico or Latin America sometimes until they're way down the line. And that means that they may have already met someone or they have, may have already stepped in it, if you will, mm-hmm. you know, by the time they call an attorney. Um, and maybe have even tried something. And uh, unfortunately, as a barrier to them going international may be that they've already had a bad experience and they have a knee jerk that we will never do that again, you know, which is unfortunate because they're going to miss the big opportunity. And there is great opportunity um, in Mexico and Latin America right now. But uh, back to your question about is a relationship important? Very important. And oftentimes I try to condition clients if I can get there early enough. When that person calls you and she says, we'd like to place an order for your product or service, you may think, oh, here's an order. We, can we fulfill that or not? Do we really want to work with someone in Mexico, Bogota, uh, Santiago? Do we really want to do that? That's complicated. What are the added costs, et cetera? That person, in their mind, is often thinking, um, I, I want to establish a long-term supply relationship with Doug, not just one order, but if this works out, I might even think about a joint venture and something I'll talk about in a minute. You may have no idea who you're talking with. Hmm. Interesting. So I'd, I'd love to pursue uh, that point, and we, and we will. One question I have, though, for you, again, going back to the foundation, um, is have you ever told someone or recommended to someone not to go international or maybe kind of parallel with that? that maybe you've noticed they're not ready, and so there's certain things that you advise. Um, how, how does that work? Yes. Um, particular, particularly the tax, there's certain things that you can do that will get yourself in trouble that are not huge issues to overcome, but you just need a little bit of planning. For example, the tax presence piece of going into most countries in Latin America. If you do this, 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 maybe if you hire employees or you open, I don't want to, you know, give legal advice because it's very factually specific, but a combination of one of these, like hiring an employee or having a salesperson, uh, uh, getting a warehouse to store my stuff, entering into a lease, um, uh, entering into a key contract, uh, uh, doing something that that uh, in a particular industry that's regulated, 
uh, all of those things could be handled, you know, within weeks or a period of months with a little bit of planning can be dealt with rather relatively quickly. But if you have gone and done that, you may have already exposed yourself to uh, tax presence by the taxing authority in that com- country of the mothership in the United States. And what we would have recommended is no, maybe uh, under those circumstances, form a subsidiary, limit the activity in that subsidiary, and the taxing authority, the only thing they want to look at, that, that they can look at is that. And you have a really great argument that the mothership up here in the United States is not touched by that from a labor standpoint or from a regulatory standpoint or from a, a tax standpoint. So yes, uh, you know, get your ducks in a row before you go. Uh, so I have told people, no, that's, uh, that's not for you. There are other, um, you know, people who just don't even know their own market or their own product, of course, uh, who haven't done due diligence to whether their product or service is it would even go over well in uh, Latin America. Probably need to do some research, like uh, the old classics of uh, uh, the car name Nova, from uh, which in Spanish Nova, and it doesn't go. Uh, you know, there's some there's some old classic. Uh, you know, our uh, Col- Colgate, uh, which if you pronounce it a little differently in Mexico, means. Colgate, which means hang yourself, you know what I mean, or just some fun things like that. But uh, you you need to think about um, some of those and how would my product or service be perceived? Is there a value proposition uh, in the market? What are the distribution channels like? You need to think through that. It seems so basic and yet you know people fall off the track so easily, don't they? Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, you're so wise. Uh, you, you're so experienced. We really appreciate your thoughts and ideas. We have several other videos that we'll be doing. Uh, thank you today and, and look forward to our conversations here in a moment. Thank you, Doug.